okay, so let's look at um, changing the total thermal energy of a system. And I have two beakers here, and they have equal amounts of thermal energy because they contain equal amounts of water, and the water is at the same temperature, about 20 degrees C. So I'm going to take these two, and I'm going to pull out or reduce some of the thermal energy within these current uh, water molecules. So let me move it over here. Uh, and the way I'm going to do that uh, is I'm going to um, take some ice water. Now it's mostly ice with some water, so it's, um, it's at zero degrees C. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some cold water. In one of them, I'm just going to put some cold water from this. Um, in the other one, I'm going to take ice, which is at the same temperature. Um, and so you would say, you know, and, and I could ask, well, why does ice make water cold? And you might say, well, duh, Mr. James, because ice is cold. But that's only partially true. So uh, there's a reason that we're going to see something different and a different temperature change in these two beakers. I added zero degrees C water, and I added zero degrees C uh, ice or solid water and but in one of them uh, it's just a combination of cold and hot water and that will lower the temperature below 20 but we're gonna see something different happen uh, in the ice water um, because the ice has got to do two things yes it's cold but also it's going to melt and that's gonna make a difference so let's set these aside and let's um we're going to give that a little bit of time and then we're going to check the temperature as we move and we're going to see what happens as we lower the thermal energy whoops in one we add cold water at zero degrees c and the other we're going to add we're going to drop the temperature again we're going to add ice which is of course solid water at zero degrees c um, so I, let me put a plus. That's what we're going to add to these two beakers, and we're going to see a very different uh, temperature change in these two. Okay, so let's look at what's happening in our beakers, and I'll show you just here the progress. The ice in this one's melting a little bit, and this one uh, is starting to equalize in temperature. So let's first look at the one that's just uh, no ice. Just I put cold water at the same temperature as the ice. The ice was zero and the cold water is at zero. Cold water is zero degrees C, room temperature water at 20 degrees C. So I'm showing longer arrows with the room temperature water. I mix them. What happens, they're, they're intermixing, they're colliding with each other. So these that are moving faster start colliding with the slower ones. The slower ones absorb some of that uh, extra kinetic energy and they start moving a little faster. So I'm slowing down these and I'm speeding up the cold ones, and I get to some average. Now, because I put less cold water in than I had of room temperature, like if it was exactly equal, then the temperature would have come out to 10 degrees, but I added a little bit less, so I had more room temp and less cold. So the, the mixed temperature is 12 and a half degrees. Uh, if I look at my ice water, and it's, the ice is not even completely melted yet, so it's gonna get colder. But it's down to six degrees. I'm using my trusty lab quest. It's, whoops, down a little below six. It keeps going, as I mix it and I get that ice kind of melting to one. It's down to two degrees. So the ice water is way colder. And how's that possible? I added the same amount of cold water as I added ice and they were both at the same temperature. So something else is going on with the ice, and it is. So why does ice make water cold? Because it melts. And let's look at, so instead of just this, there's something else going on with the ice water. When I add ice, Okay, so ice 
at 0 degrees C. Uh, that is, of course, the melting point of water. So what is ice doing? It's got a certain amount of motion, and it's up to enough temperature that it's close to where it can start to melt. And I'm just showing these, so it's got this vibrational motion of the water molecules. Uh, so what is going to happen when I put this in room temperature water? Two things, two separate processes have to add, add up. When this finally reaches some equal temperature, there's two things that have to occur. The ice must melt. I can't have ice, so, so it's now at like 1.3 degrees. I can't have ice at one degree. It's got to melt to get up to one degree. So the ice must melt to get above zero degrees C. So it's going to melt. What is melting? I've got to break the bonds, right? So I've got to break. So the ice, there were hydrogen bonding, which we'll get into, of the water molecules holding it together. It was vibrating. As soon as I get it vibrating enough, boom, I can break that and snap that particle out. And now it's roaming around as cold water. So the ice must melt. And there, therefore, we're going to change the arrangement from solid to liquid. That melting process involves the breaking of bonds. Think of attractions <coughs> uh, like magnets. If I have two magnets and they're held together and I have to rip them apart, that puts energy in. Breaking of bonds or breaking of attractions requires, uh, you got to rip those things apart. There's an attractive force holding them there. You have to overcome that with energy. So, um, breaking bonds requires energy. So if I'm going to break some bonds, uh, that's energy going in. And here's our second type of energy. Uh, if I break the bonds and I put energy in, I change their arrangement from solid to liquid. I just put energy in to do that. <coughs> energy must be conserved. Therefore, all that energy I put into breaking the bonds as I melt the ice has to be stored. Potential energy. is based on the arrangement of particles. And I'm just going to add in a system. How are the particles arranged? Uh, because that determines how much energy is stored in there as potential energy. Uh, and so we can think very much this potential energy in chemistry is very much like potential energy in, in physics. If I take this wrench and I lift it up off of the earth, we say it's gained gravitational potential energy. If I let it go and it falls, it loses gravitational potential energy. So the arrangement of this wrench with the planet earth uh, has a certain stored energy. If it's up here, it's got a certain amount of stored energy. If I drop it on the floor, it now has a much lower sense of stored potential energy. So the arrangement matters. The arrangement of objects, uh, if we're talking about on a mass scale, um, you know, uh, the arrangement of objects with the Earth has a certain gravitational potential energy. Chemical potential energy is based on the arrangement of particles in a system. Uh, solid has a certain stored potential energy. Liquid has another store, sense of stored and potential energy. If I change this, I have changed their arrangement. I've changed their potential energy. So um, this process, the melting process, put energy in. If I put energy in, to break the bonds, 
that energy has to be stored. So therefore, going from solid to liquid took energy input. That energy is stored in this new arrangement. Uh, so the liquid has a higher potential energy. If I had to put energy in to make that change, then the liquid has to have a higher potential energy because energy must be conserved. And so we're going to look at these different ways. So why did this arrangement with the ice water get so much colder? Uh, because it took energy in order to melt the ice. Melting the ice required energy to break those bonds. Since it required energy, that energy is stored. Where did the energy come from? And this is something we'll expand on as, as we go. Where did that energy come from to break those bonds? It came from the room temperature water. The room temperature water gave up some of its energy mo of motion to change the potential energy or to increase the potential energy of the water. Uh, and so we will continue this process. Uh, this is our introductory video. Uh, a lot more coming on potential energy.